Hi, Salem family. I'm Laura Frank, and over the next few Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'm going to be sharing with you some devotions about how to be the church in today's world. And these devotions were written by Pastor Andy Jones, who used to be Vicar Andy Jones, and he is now a pastor in California. And he's given us permission to use these as our devotions. So today's today is part one, and it's called Being a Less Anxious Presence. In the past couple of weeks, there has been a lot to react to. And the reaction that I've seen has been hard to observe. Pettiness, vitriol, anger. There's very little patience, tact, thoughtfulness, or compassion. Christians are not outstanding in their reactions. In fact, they are as indistinguishable as the rest. Before we go any further, it's important to define some terms. When we say holy, I mean set apart, different, not common. Holy can mean a lot of other things as well, but let the reader understand that I'm using it in this set apart way. When I say church, I make no distinction between the local aspect of the church and the global aspect of the church. We confess that we believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. Why do we always overlook that first adjective? We are one church. There is one church. Capitalizing the word doesn't give it any more gravitas and lowering, lower casing doesn't make it any more small or insignificant. It has visible and invisible aspects for sure, but there is one church. So as I make suggestions about the holiness of the church, I'm suggesting ways in which the one church can set itself apart. So number one, being a less anxious presence. Everyone around us is filled with anxiety. They're running around in the race of life, overscheduled, overtired, overcaffeinated, and overanxious about their past, present, and future. When one anxious person meets another anxious person, we can see their anxiety multiply as they feed off of each other with unhealthy behavior. They're unable to listen and care for the other because they are so consumed with themselves. What if the church was different? What if when we met with anxious people, we didn't rise to their anxiety? What if we were simply less anxious? What if we found a way to connect the peace that God gives us with our daily lives and helped lessen the anxiety that is so rampant in the world? From what I'm observing, many people are anxious because they are afraid, particularly afraid of failure, being bad parents, afraid of our country failing, afraid of losing their job, afraid of being on the losing side of anything. And those are legitimate concerns. And yet, the repeated words of God ring out to us. Fear not. Whenever the Lord appears or sends a messenger with this message, oftentimes the, promised atta- the promise attached to it is this. I will be with you. This is the message to Moses, Joshua, and Gideon. It's the promise given to Jesus' disciples as they are sent to make disciples of all nations and be witnesses of Jesus' resurrection. It's the promise you and I receive in baptism. One way for the church to stand out in today's world is to be a place of peace and calm, to be a people of joy and contentment in a world fueled by FOMO fear of missing out. When we rely on God's presence, we let our presence reflect his presence of peace and contentment because he has promised to be with us. Now, there are lots of caveats here. Anxiety disorders are real. I'm not suggesting that people are faithless or sinful because of their anxiety. There are problems in the world that need to be addressed. 
I'm not suggesting laziness or ambivalence that turn a blind eye to the problems of the world. I am suggesting, though, that we run the race set before us, certain of its ending, cognizant of the obstacles that exist on the course, and help as many people as possible through those obstacles. If we crowd the course with noise and nonsense, it's going to be a lot harder. In many distance races, there are pace groups. These are led by experienced runners who are able to run the prescribed time in a consistent manner. They are there to encourage the runners who join the group, helping them reach their goal and enjoying the race in the meantime. The church is like a pace group in the race of faith. We invite people to join our pace group. We encourage them. We help them. We listen to their struggles. The world has all sorts of pace groups with a terrible strategy to the race of life. They start too fast. They run off course. Their heads are down. They're carrying too much stuff on their backs. And the pacers in the world just keep adding more to everyone's pack. These pace groups make it harder and harder to keep going. May the church be a pace group where people find calm in the midst of chaos, peace in the midst of panic, and hope in the midst of hurry. And let's remember that we have a pace group leader who carries all of that for us, who feeds us with miraculous food and drink to nourish and encourage us. He sacrifices himself to overcome the most dangerous obstacles on the course so that we can keep going. And then he rises from the grave to keep leading us. I hope you join me on Tuesdays and Thursdays to finish out the rest of this series. And I hope that today you can find peace in the middle of chaos. God's blessings on your day.